All right, we're here for the week four press conference with defensive coordinator, inside linebackers coach Peter Sermon prior to Washington, Pac-12 opener on Saturday in Seattle. We'll go ahead and get questions started with Jeff Ferrato. Good morning, Peter. How are you doing? Good morning, Jeff. How are you? I'm all right. So are you having nightmares uh, as you watch uh, tape of uh, Washington and all the ways they can attack a defense? Well, I think nightmares would uh, be under the assumption that I'm sleeping. Uh, so, uh, yeah, while I'm awake, I'm having nightmares. Uh, it's, uh, they're uh, an extremely talented team uh, with a, you know, it, it's one thing having talent, but it's another thing to have the, the talent playing together. They're extremely well coached. Uh, they do a fantastic job of designing, uh, I think, the, the system around their players and really utilizing those players exceptionally well. All right, we'll go to Steve Croner from the SF Chronicle. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Um, I asked this to Justin. I'll throw it out to you as well. In general terms, is it harder, easier to go against a quarterback such as Penix, who isn't quite the mobile guy, say, that Bo Nix or uh, Caleb Williams is, but is a dart thrower? Seems like he rarely is uh, throwing an inaccurate pass. Or somebody like a Nix or Williams, uh, Williams is pretty darn accurate too, who might not have quite the accuracy, but, but is more mobile. You know, I think that's that's you're probably. I don't know if it even matters. You know, it's the the accuracy. Um, you know, it's it's kind of the style of play. Uh, both are exceptionally hard. Um, you know, you see that uh, the guys that that can escape pressure in the college football game are are uh, elite guys, just because the typically the the defensive line you don't have enough. Uh, you don't have enough athletes that can that can tackle that type of player in college. Uh, you see it, you know, it changes a little bit in the NFL when, uh, you know, when you have a different style of athlete on the defensive line and it's different, a little bit of different style of play calling in the NFL, uh, where it's more of a uh, throw game on some of those, you know, third and three turns into a, a throw game, which isn't necessarily true in college football. Uh, but you know, I'd say guys that can guys that can throw the ball accurately. Uh, or as as concerning as guys that are elusive, uh, an accurate thrower, uh, they can uncover covered players. Uh, you can you can throw the ball uh, in areas uh, that that is nearly impossible to defend, and that you know that becomes an issue all on its own. Thank you. All right, we'll go to Jim McGill from Bear Insider. Uh, the Idaho quarterback was having a surprising level of success throwing the ball, especially in critical positions um, in the first half. What what changed so much? Um, did you did you make adjustments later on, or um, what, was, what was the reason for the stark difference in play? We we made some few uh, a few tweaks. Uh, you know the the guy did a heck of a job versus single high. He took some he took some. Uh, you know we didn't do a good job on some on some single slants on uh, X with the middle field closed. It was really, uh, um, you know I, I thought uh, we could have played those plays a little bit better. Um, and quite honestly, I got a little frustrated, and uh, I kept calling some things because I wanted to see us compete. I wanted to see us win some X shots. Um, and then uh, as we got into the game a little bit. You know, I think uh, I had to become a little more uh, adaptive and maybe a little less hard-headed, and uh, gave him some different pictures uh, to kind of help support that uh, that that single side. And then I thought the the guys, you know, played a little bit uh, technique a little bit better. Um, but you know, those first three drives were uh, extremely frustrating, uh, and we talked about it at halftime. Uh, talked about it when I addressed the the defense that uh, that was something that is uncharacteristic and. And uh, you know we have to play to uh, our what I say we have to play to our capacity. Uh, if you're a good player, you need to play good. If you're not a good player, then I don't expect you to play good. Uh, but the guys that are in there uh, have enough talent to do what I'm asking them to do, I believe. And we just have to get into a point where uh, the consistency uh, is, you know, the consistency of how we play uh, matches what I believe our ability level is. All right, we'll go to Thomas Dunn from Redford, California. Uh, good morning, Peter. Can you just Describe the bind the linebackers will be in this week from having to commit themselves to the run game and being at the second level versus the, all the crossing routes that Washington has and then eventually having to cover a tight end that may leak out over the middle. 
I think everybody's going to have uh, their their set of issues this this weekend. Um, you know, just looking at the statistics, uh, what Coach Grubb and Coach DeBoer have done up there. I mean, guys, they're at nine and a half yards per play. I mean, just just take that in consideration of of what that is. That is um, unbelievable on the the production of the yards per play. Um, you know, so uh, I think everybody is going to be in. Um, have the ability to be in some uh, predicaments. Uh, but in regards to the inside backers, I mean, yeah, there, there'll be some opportunities for them. Uh, you know, some of the, if they're, if they're running the ball effectively, it, it can make a, an issue when they do take some of their design shots and they, they protect it up and push the routes down the field. We got to do a good job of, you know, instructing what the call is. You know, if you're playing zone through it, if you're playing man through it and kind of the different, uh, the different techniques that you use if you do transition from uh, run action to, to drop back. Yeah. All right, we'll go ahead and start the second round of questions now and go back to Jeff Ferrado from Cal Sports Report. Um, I'm wondering, Peter, how much confidence you get from the fact that you guys played them really tough last year. I think they scored 28 points, which probably is more than you want to give up, but it's a lot fewer than they normally score. Uh, does that give your guys and you some confidence that you can do something against this team? Well, I, I think that, that we feel we, we match up well versus a lot of the teams in the conference. Uh, there's a lot of very talented teams. And, you know, you look at, uh, you know, statistically, you know, I was looking at the yards per play. I mean, we're, we're staring at, I think, three of the top three in, in America of yards per play right now are, are living in our conference. So it's, uh, it's a great challenge, um, you know, but, you know, we're not going into this game not believing that we can't go out there and compete. Uh, I hope that there's not a single team out there in America that, uh, you know, has to, um, you know, make up the the opportunity to think that you can go out there and compete versus a team. They're a, they're a, a very very talented offense, and they're extremely well coached. But we're excited about the opportunity. Uh, we're going to get our guys ready, and and uh, I feel good about the guys that we have to go out there. And I think they have the capacity to go out there and, and play very well. And you guys have been exceptional taking the ball away. I think you're sharing the national lead with ten takeaways. How important is that going to be in a game like this where they are so prolific to, to just take it from them a few times? You know, that's the number one indicator in, in winning and losing, uh, you know, is, is, the, is the times you have the ball. And then, when, you know, if we do have the opportunity to get the ball away, uh, you know, playing complimentary football and be able to uh, take advantage of it. And at the same time, if, you know, if, if our offense, if they take the ball away from our offense, we have to go out there. And, and I think that's something we can improve on uh, is, you know, what we do after sudden change. Uh, I think we can do a better job of, of forcing kicks, um, you know, getting to punt situations instead of uh, PAT situations. But uh, takeaways are huge, and I think uh, the guys have been uh, fantastic. I thought the Auburn game in particular, uh, you saw guys actively trying to punch the ball out uh, with the forced fumbles. Uh, sometimes the, the interceptions come in batches, uh, but rarely do you see a lot of intentional uh, fumbles being forced, and I thought that's, that's as uh, good a sign as I've seen from, from the group as anything. And, and on a different topic slightly, they don't seem to allow any sacks. I think uh, Phoenix has been sacked once, the other guy once. Um, how, does that impact how you approach uh, defending them? Do, do you feel like you can get to them, or do you feel like they're not going to give up many and maybe we need to go with a different scheme? Well, there's there's a lot of different ways of looking at that. I know uh, Coach Huff does a great job, uh, first of all, identifying uh, O-linemen, um, in, in raising them up and developing them in that system. And then they play uh, they play hard. They play with really good bend. They play with punch. You see guys uh, on some of the bumps, you know, knocking people to the ground. They clean up piles. So they do a really nice job of, of protecting the quarterback. Um, you know, but we'll, again, we'll have to, we'll have to uh, rush through them sometimes. And, and what they, if they want to have some uh, deeper concepts and, and, you know, add some additional players to uh, the protections, then, then we got to kind of you know, scratch and claw and fight our way through that. Um, so, you know, it's, there's a, again, there's a lot of different ways of, of approaching that. But the first thing is, you know, they do a great job of protecting the quarterback and protecting the football. And those, those are things that uh, as an offense, I mean, you're, you're starting off on the right page if you can uh, be proficient in both of those. Thank you. All right, we'll go back to Jim McGill from Bear Insider. Um, obviously, defense is a team game, but you're, you're facing what seems to be uh, and then usually a late uh, quarterback and receiving crew. How are your DBs approaching this? Are they looking at, at it as a, a challenge and a litmus test for where they are at this point in the season? 
They're good. They're, yeah, they are, Jim. They're looking for it as a, a, a great accept the challenge. You know, uh, when you come to college football, you want to play against the finest players that are uh, available to compete against. And that's what we're, you know, that's what we're fixing to get into here for the next, you know, eight or nine weeks is, is playing against some of the most talented offenses uh, in America, you know, led by the most, you know, some of the most talented offensive play callers in America. And this is what this is what the, the, the Pac-12 is right now. This is what the West Coast football is. And, and if you're not if you're not here to enjoy that facet of, of what the Pac-12 has to offer, then then these games aren't for you. But I, I think the guys that are here in our program uh, are are really excited about playing against the best. And I think this group is is as good, if not the best, uh, that we'll face all year. And that's not a slight on anybody else, because, uh, like I said, there's ex- some extreme talent. Um, you know, NIL has done uh, the offensive side of the ball well. You know, you don't need to go to the NFL anymore to, to be compensated for, uh, you know, high quality players, you know, so those guys can stay in college, continue to develop, and they can continue to retain uh, their talented players. And, and you're seeing a great on the field product because of it. All right, we'll wrap this up with one last question from Steve Croner from the SF Chronicle. Yeah, Peter, last year we talked uh, before Jackson went against Washington, and I don't. Jackson probably better to answer this than you, but you're his dad. I'm sure you get some sense. Do you think it's a bigger deal for Jackson this year because he's playing the Husky Stadium, or do you think it was last year because it was the first time? You know, Steve. Actually, I mean, we haven't visited about that at all. Uh, you know, that that's probably you're right. A better question for him. Uh, and any time that that uh, you know you you play against your buddies, didn't matter if you're in you know grow up in the same the same uh, small town or you have a crosstown rival, you know people. I think it's always a a, a special time. Um, but I really haven't visited with him about him uh, returning back to Husky Stadium. Uh, you know, I imagine that uh, there'll be some uh, good memories there that he's had, and uh, hopefully he, you know, plays his tail off and he gets to say uh, hello to some of his buddies. Thank you. All right, we actually do have one more question. We'll go back to Jeff Ferrado. Yeah, can you uh, talk a little bit about Roma Dunze? They've got three really good receivers, but he seems to be head and shoulders better than maybe anybody in the conference, or as good as anybody in the country, perhaps. What makes him so good, and and uh, who, have you seen anybody that compares with him? You know, the I think all three of them. I think you're right, Jeff. Are, are very, very talented. I think uh, Rome has size, he has speed, and he has an unbelievable uh, catch radius. I think uh, I think that probably what really distinguishes him. Uh, you know, and I don't know what the uh, what the NFL prospects and all that stuff are, but I mean, there's really not uh, that I've seen a ball that's within his within his reach that he come, can't come down with. Uh, he does a fantastic job of high pointing the ball. He makes competitive catches. Uh, and, you know, when they take their shots down the field by design, uh, Penix feels very comfortable really throwing all three of those guys, and all three of those guys have been uh, exceptional of, of climbing up and, and, and coming down with those competitive balls. But I think they all have good size. They all have enough stature that, uh, you know, they can't get pushed around, you know, where some, you know, sometimes that you see a, a highly productive player in college doesn't quite have the stature, and if you can put your hands on somebody, it, it really kind of disrupts them. Uh, all three of these guys have enough enough strength to, to run through uh, some handsy DBs, you know, if you're trying to be physical with them. So, uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's a challenge to, you know, typically a team has one, but for them to have three uh, with the offensive line play and then, you know, shoot, the Westover, I mean, Jack Westover, I mean, he's, he's catching touchdowns and, and he's all over the field as well. Thank you. All right, that'll wrap us up this week with Coach Sermon. We'll be back in a few minutes with offensive coordinator Jake Spadatol. Thanks, guys.